Welcome back to Cursed Mining and today we are modding the RTX 3090 FE with thermal pads to fix it. When I say fix, I mean memory temperatures for overclock and mostly but not only mining. We'll do before and after. This is the heaviest card I ever held. Without modding, I did not dare to overclock much. So our baseline here is sad. Already at a power limit of 68%, minus 200 core and no memory overclock. It only manages 90 MHz a second with the memory already sitting at 96 degrees Celsius. With a power consumption of 236 watts from the software, that's way too hot. And it gets outperformed by thermal modded 3080s link in the top right corner. Any higher power limit or higher overclock would mean cooked memory, so 100 degree upwards, up to the thermal throttle of 110 degrees C. Definitely nothing we want to keep, so let's unleash the beast by fixing it. Today we need 1.5 mm thick thermal pads. I bought two 100 times 100 mm packs to be safe, but I did not need more than one pack. So one pack of 100 x 100 mm is enough. I have the brand Jellit today with 12 watt per meter kelvin thermal conductivity. I have to say it's the most complicated card I ever took apart. You need tape to take off screw covers, you need different torque sizes and basically have to take off everything thing including the IO shield. You have to take care of a few cables while taking the card apart as well. There are two channels I want to mention here. Gamers Nexus did an amazing teardown on that card as always, but a big kudos goes to Crypto at Home who did this mod in the first place and without him there would not be any info on the internet without it. So big respect to the guy. I'm not sure if I would have dared to take apart an FE without it. He's linked below and say hi from Cursed Mining. That is the reason why YouTube is great. Of course I have to do my own version of this when I'm doing it. Basically this GPU is confusing as it looks both sided. That is because the memory chips are on front and back. So you start from the back plate basically and then free the front. First removing the sticky old stuff and cleaning the card with 99% isopropanol alcohol and a microfiber cloth. Cutting thermal pads in size the same process as in many videos you know from me by now. So you start here already. First the backplate thermal pads, but I put them directly on the PCB. On the exposed side I leave the plastic sheet on until almost the very end. And after that we can continue further. Now you see the massive heatsink itself and can turn the card around to reveal the chip and more memory. So of course we have to do this side too. You can either replace the pads directly on the cooler or work on the PCB. I decided to do it on the board directly again. So I try to kinda strategically cut to not waste pads as this card really needs a lot as you see. So now the inner memory chips and some extra places. After cleaning and pads, what is left is thermal paste. I'm using Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut as you know, as always, spread over the whole die. Then it's starting to put it all back together, which is less fun than with other brands. Everything reversed. The cables will be annoying when putting it back together and be careful that everything actually fits and snaps together. If you leave any air gaps or thermal pads get stuck somewhere, you will have terrible results. And I'm talking from experience because I had to redo the backplate once as I indeed had trapped a little piece of pad. That was fixed quickly, everything back together, so it was time to test the beast again. Same setting as before, 68% power limit, minus 200 core and no memory overclock and yup, it worked out yet again. We are down to 76 degrees C, so minus 20 degrees Celsius again. Similar results as to the 3080 from Gigabyte after the modding. I'd say minus 20 degrees C on such an expensive card for around 20 bucks worth of thermal pads is a result I take any day. Also the fan is not needed at 100% anymore and with the 3090's huge fans this is nice. At 75% and dimension settings it stays at 82 degrees C memory temperature. That's already great but that also meant I could now finally start tweaking the card and try out things. I did a dedicated video on hash rate and tweaking last week. I'll link it for you above as I know there are also non-minus watching these thermal pad videos and I wanted it separate anyway for order. 
I'll still show you two of my favorite settings on screen. 120 MHz a second sounds great, but I'd rather take the 114 at 30 watts less. Oh yeah, lastly, on my little cutting board, you can see what was left from the 100 x 100 mm sized pad. I even screwed up a few cuts and there was still plenty left. Long story short, if you have an FE RTX 3090 and had it burning up, this is your solution. I gotta say, even though I have repadded and repasted a lot of cards in my career, this was scary at first because Nvidia really, yeah, they don't make it straightforward <laughs> to open the card compared to other manufacturers where you just open, you know, four screws and are done. But once added and having explored new things like these annoying little cables, everything went fine and absolutely no regrets. By the way, why these videos are so important for me is that memory TJ Maxx is 95 degrees C, safe running temperature. That's the reason why I'm honestly worried about each and every RTX 3000 card and you will in the long term get a thermal video about every GPU I own. I think I need a contract with a thermal pad company at some point. So this was a scary shoot, but the 3090 is finally unleashed for no matter what I threw at it. I would do it again any day of the week. Again, a dedicated hash rate and setting video for you is on the channel if you're looking for that. That's it. Let me know what you think and how your card's memory is doing. Please subscribe for weekly technology and crypto videos. Happy mining and bye.